Hey, basic bakers, welcome back to the cookie chat. I am Chelsea with Rolling in the Dough AZ, and I am flying solo today because our episode is all about airbrushing. Airbrushing tends to be one of those skills within the baking community that can be highly intimidating. But don't let that scare you. Just like anything else that you have learned this fa- thus far would be you have to take your time to master it, to learn, and to adapt as you go. Airbrushing is no exception to that. I myself do not claim to be a master and expert on airbrushing, but these are just some things that I have picked up over the past six years that have helped me while I execute some designs with my trusty airbrush machine. Speaking of machines, I am using the Cookie Countess airbrush machine. It is the same exact one I purchased six years ago. It has been my ride or die OG. I will also be using the Cookie Countess airbrush coloring. Now, if you have something different, that is completely fine. Melissa and I always love to tell you guys to make your dollar work for you and your business. There's no need to rush out and purchase the exact items I have. What you have on hand should work just fine. If you have not pulled the trigger and invested in any airbrush color, that's okay too. You can always take your gel colors, dilute it down with a little bit of water, make sure it's thin enough though that it's really going to come through your airbrush gun and not get all clogged up. That's another way that you can have a workaround or if there's a specific color that you really want to use, try that little technique. In today's tutorial, we're going to hit on a few different airbrushing skills. First off, we're going to learn some shading, just some little ombre effects, um, ways that you can bring some life to maybe just a plain colored cookie. We are then going to move to stencils um, and also using a stencil and adding some luster dust or glitter to it. And it's just really going to elevate that design up a notch. Last, the dreaded, when we have to airbrush with black. I'm going to go ahead and share some tips with you guys on how I try and best airbrush with black. It's always a scary one. Are the lines going to come out, Chris? You got to pay attention. Let's wait and see um, where this takes us. But with that being said, enough of my rambling, but I do want to throw in one more thing. Make sure that you like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you can be notified over here when we launch new videos like this. With that being said, let's dive into the tutorial. Welcome back. We're going to go ahead and get started first off with talking about the airbrush machine. Like I said earlier, this is the Cookie Countess airbrush machine. It's the first one I purchased six years ago. It's still my ride or die. Oh gee, it's never let me down. I do not have experience with other airbrush machines, so I cannot help troubleshoot on each individual one. However, I'm sure there's a lot of similarities between each of the brands. Also, if you do have a favorite airbrush machine, comment below and tell us what your favorite machine is and let's see which one wins. All right, getting started with the machine, getting used to it. So when we take this out of the box, this is gonna be our power source. So it's what plugs into the wall, plugs in underneath. Right here, we're gonna have our compressor. This little bad boy is our gun. We have our air hose, which is the white. And then we also have our little control right here. This controls the PSI, the pressure for the air, the air pressure that's going to come out. And then our power button. All right, pretty simple here. So with the Cookie Countess, they use something called a single action gun. So what a single action gun means is I'm going to turn this on and you're going to be able to hear it. Okay. The air is coming out, but there's no color coming. There will not be any color until I pull back on this trigger. I have some color in here to show you guys. So the little trigger right here is going to determine when the color comes out. What this trigger controls is a needle that's inside this well. I take off the front part of this gun. Don't wanna lose that piece. We can see this little needle. It is sharp, but when I pull back, it comes in. And that is what is letting the color then come out the tip of the gun. 
So if I barely pull back a little bit, it's only gonna allow a little bit of color. If I fully engage the trigger, it's going to allow more color to come out. So that's what this is controlling and it's inside this well. So I'm gonna get my tip put back on and keep going from there. All right, the other type of guns that there are are dual action guns. And the dual action guns mean that you have to push down on the trigger and pull back for the color to release. Again, this is single action. It only requires the pull of the trigger. Now that we have gone over the basics on the machine, I wanna go over a few other things with you guys. I have my airbrush machine in my cookie room. So with it being in here on my desk, I put a paper towel underneath because this color well right here, when putting my airbrush gun in and out, can sometimes leak a little bit of color. So if it leaks out the back of this machine, I always keep a paper towel underneath. I didn't change it out specifically to show you guys that it does transfer color at times. So that's something I do to help keep my counter protected. Another thing when airbrushing that I do is a little hack. I use one of my lids for my half pan sheets and this is what I airbrush in. I have a white countertop in my cookie room and I only airbrush in here. So that way any overspray, any color leakage is all right here. I can just take this to the kitchen and I can clean one thing. Another trick, because I hear all the time people saying, I can't airbrush because I'm going back and forth between the kitchen to rinse things out. It's just so much of a nuisance to me. Here's a little trick, guys. These plastic measuring cups from the dollar store, they're gonna be your best friend. So I have one empty one, and I have one of these filled with warm water, warm to hot. I like to start it hot because it's gonna cool off as I go. But what I do in my cookie room, in between airbrushing, is I hold my gun over the empty container with the hot water, I pour it into the well and tip the gun sideways. Pull back on the trigger and I spray until it comes out clear. Sometimes, depending on the color, it can take one or two rinses. You can always shoot your hand until you see it coming clear. And there we go. That way I am not running back and forth, back and forth. I can just go dump this out and I can refill this one with hot water as many times as I need. Something else I love when airbrushing is my little stencil genie. I know there's so many things now out here in the market, the screens, the little magnets like this that you can clip onto the sides of your stencils and stack them for however high you need depending on how thick your cookie is. Whatever works for you is going to be best. Again, everyone's thickness of their cookies really vary nowadays, so one product might not work for everybody. It's really trying to find out what works best for you. For me, it's the Stencil Genie. So the Stencil Genie, if I, it's just magnetic and clips together. You can see that there's a thinner section and a thicker section. So you put them together, that's gonna be dependent on how thick your cookie is, which I'll go ahead and show you. When it lays flat, you can just go ahead and flip either way. For this tutorial, I'm going to be working with mainly the Cookie Countess Airbrush Coloring. I do love this airbrush brand personally. I also do have the tried and true of the Americolors. 
They're just smaller bottles. These ones I use more for like a specialty color if I use it a lot. Other than that, I really do like how much I get in here and I don't feel that they, the um, Cookie Countess ones are as liquidy. Some brands I've used are super thin and just leave so much like pixelated coloring. I don't know, it's personal preference, not one brand is better than the other or any of that. It's just, again, all comes down to what you like, the look you're trying to go for. Um, I also find that these are a little bit more affordable. And again, like I said, they last longer for the price. If you need a color that you do not have an airbrush, you can always take your gel colors and add a little bit of water to it in your gun, like dilute it down and airbrush with that. Melissa and I are always about using what you have, getting through that and making your dollar as a business owner work for you. So do not feel like you need to rush out and buy airbrush color. I know some cookie artists who have never purchased an airbrush color and only use their gel colors. With gel colors also, it is a way for you to match the cookie. So if you're just looking for a little bit of a highlight on your cookie. We're gonna go ahead and get started. I always recommend wearing gloves anytime you are working with cookies, touching your customer's products. Also when you're airbrushing because airbrush can stay in your hands. We've all seen the million times that cookiers say, you know you're a cookier. You know you're a cookier when you have airbrushed hands. So first things first, we're just gonna go ahead and play with the machine and get used to our trigger, our pressure, all of that. So I'm gonna put some pink into the color holder. Just a few drops in there. I don't fill mine to the top because when I tilt my gun to work, I don't want the color splashing over the edge. I, my goal in all of this is to make the least amount of mess as I can. But second, I don't wanna waste my product. I'd rather add than have to dispose of. All right, let's get started here. So on my machine right here, I can control the pressure. Obviously, if I turn it all the way down, no pressure. If I crank it all the way up, it's gonna be the most pressure. So that's gonna be something that you're gonna wanna find where your sweet spot is. Also, again, like we talked about, when you pull back this trigger, small hand problems <laughs> of extra material, if you pull it back ever so slightly, you're going to get only minimal amount. The more you pull it all the way back, the more saturated the color is going to be. So what do I mean? Let's see if I can zoom in here. All right, let's try this. So I have my color all the way up right now, or my pressure, I'm sorry, all the way up on the machine. I'm just gonna take a Paper towel, and this is how I recommend if you have never airbrushed, if you've never airbrushed before, just mess around on a paper towel. All you're trying to get used to is the pressure feel um, and what you like. So I'm just gonna barely pull it back and we can see some color coming out on the paper. Hopefully that is in frame. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. All right. And again, I'm barely pulling back on that trigger but I'm also far away. If I come closer to the paper and pull, I'm gonna get a deeper color. So the further away you are from the object, just the slight mist you're gonna have. The closer you hold your gun, the darker the color is gonna be. So those are both the same pressure, but just the proximity to the paper towel. One of the big things was people saying that they were getting like a pixelated look when they do airbrush. Um, what I'm gonna do is on the pressure, I'm gonna turn it all the way down and I'm gonna show you guys. You can hear the difference in the pressure, listen. That's more air pressure. That's a little bit of air pressure. So a little bit of air pressure and a little bit of the pull of the trigger do you guys see that? You gotta tell me you could see that. Like how that looks. I'm the same distance away. If I get closer, 
look at that. See how like just pixelated it is versus that? If you're getting that and you have a pressure control, increase your pressure. I like to work at almost high pressure on mine because all I'm doing then is pulling back the trigger. I'm gonna zoom out on here. There we go. I'm just pulling back the trigger and I get a much softer blend. Versus again, if I turned mine down and did the same thing, it's like splotchy. I should probably do them right next to each other. Hopefully you guys are getting the gist of this. And then turn it up. Look how smooth that is. If I go closer and really pull back, see how dark that is? So it's really getting that feel for how much of your trigger to pull. Very rarely do I ever, 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 ever just pull all the way back because that is so much at one time. That's where you can get like drippage and leaking. It looks like water. The thing with airbrush is it's buildable. Really similar to like what Melissa talked about in the watercoloring tutorials that we have. If you have not seen that, go ahead and check out our video from two weeks ago. And Melissa does an entire watercoloring tutorial for you guys. How amazing is she? Everything is buildable and airbrush is no exception to that. Again, take your time, play with your paper towels. You can also blend colors on here. So if you want to see how things look before putting it on a cookie, test it on a paper towel. They are your best friends. Let's get started with our first tutorial. I'm going to show you guys a few different ways on airbrushing, how you can make it work for you. So since I already have some peek in the gun, I am going to bring over the start of a little floral cookie. So I have my florets piped. It's dried and I just want to enhance this a little bit. I love this technique when it comes to the hibiscus flowers, which are really coming back into theme with summertime. Anytime before I airbrush onto my cookie, I always test the color on the side of my paper towel. So again, I have my lid, I have my paper towel in here. I'm just gonna go ahead and highlight the center of the cookie. So I'm just slowly pulling the trigger back and rotating in circular motion. So if you can see on there, it's just enough of a hint. I could leave it like this before I pipe to my center onto my cookie, like I could put a little middle and it would just be a little something extra. Or I can keep building the color and making it more vibrant. Another little tip for florals is I already started right here, but you can see just the tips of the florals are hit with the airbrush machine. Again, same thing. I'm just slightly pulling back on the trigger and I'm holding the cookie. And I'm just letting a little bit of airflow and moving the cookie around. You come underneath then, get the little ruffles. It just enhances the cookie a little bit. If I really wanted to darken it, I could pull back a little bit heavier on the gun. And the little trigger. And I can really make the leaves tips pop. And if I move the cookie further and pull back, I could give it a little ombre airbrush. So those are two little tips on just one way that you can use your airbrush machine. Moving on to another little tidbit um, is I'm just gonna take this yellow cookie. Let's pretend it's a lemon, all right? So on the lemon, I like using my airbrush very similar to like I just showed you on the flowers, just to highlight. So I'm gonna take plain yellow cookie. Again, I filled my 
color well up with some yellow. You can see it's on my gloves. This is why I wear gloves. Turning my gun on, I have not adjusted the air pressure at all. Again, it's all gonna be in the trigger work. Spraying a little bit just to make sure that it's coming out evenly and it's not spitting. I am just going to, holding my gun a good hand-esque away from my cookie, and it's slightly pulling back on the trigger, I'm just gonna come around and slightly hit the edge of my cookie. You can see that it's spring because there's now a yellow hue around it. I'm gonna bring my gun a little bit closer now, but again, not pulling back very strong on the trigger. And you can hear the clicks, it's me releasing, like if I just want a little wisp. Think of it as like you're putting some makeup on your cookie, kind of contouring the cookie. I'm just going around the edge. And I just added a little bit of dimension and character to my cookie. So there we go. So if I were to put something on this cookie, it would just bring, again, a little bit of life to the edge of my cookie. Now what we're gonna do is work with a stencil on our first little cookie. So I'm gonna use a honeycomb stencil because I still have some yellow in the machine and I don't wanna waste my coloring. So I have my flooded cookie. Again, when using airbrush, you wanna make sure that your top layer is crusted over. Like I can add some pressure to this cookie and it's not doing anything. Because with the stencil genie or your holder and your stencil, it is going to add a little bit of pressure to the top of your cookie. You do not want to pull your stencil up and all of a sudden it's pulling part of your icing. That's something we do not want that. So for my stencil genie, I'm going to pull it apart. I'm going to put my honeycomb stencil in and that's what it does. It just clicks into place. You can adjust it because sometimes the, when it clicks, into place, it can move. So you can always adjust it. All right, so how we talked about earlier with the edges being two different shapes, this is where you're gonna find what fits on your cookie. So you want the tightest fit. So if I place it on mine right now with the small side down, that's a good fit. This one also works pretty nicely. So on this cookie, either one. I'm sure we're gonna have one that I'll show you that it's like, this one, eh, it's a little bit wobblier. Don't even love that, that's gonna be a word, right? So this one I can press down and it gives me the tightest. I wanna make sure my stencil is as tight to my cookie as I can. If it's just loosely sitting on there, like I was to use this stencil and not put it in a clamp, do you see how it's kind of bending around? And I can do that and kind of spread it apart. It's gonna allow the airbrush to seep underneath. So we want a nice seal on that cookie. I am also gonna go ahead and grab some of my uh, luster dust because I'm gonna show you guys how you can airbrush with a stencil and then use glitter. I get asked that so many times from beginners with airbrushing is how did I get glitter incorporated into my design? So, do not be intimidated with the stencil. Just like I said, practice on your um, paper towel if you need to. This is all going to be trial and error. So, you can use like extra cookies. You can actually flood both sides of these and just work on stenciling. Put the machine on. Here we go. I'm gonna start by doing a light coat. With this design on the honeycombs, you can kind of choose. I always tend to go sideways with designs. You don't wanna just be like, shh, and coat it. Do you love the sound effects? Doing that, it's just gonna saturate your cookie. So again, think 
it's buildable. It's like our makeup, our foundations, we wanna start and add to. So I'm gonna start, test, here we go. And I'm gonna slowly fill in a little bit of the top. Come down to the next layer and you can hear it. Again, I'm letting my gun go, okay? Next layer. When I get to the end, I'm letting up on my trigger. And then on the bottom. If you wanted just a little light mist on this, you could totally leave this as is. I'm gonna darken it up. So as I'm talking to you, I'm allowing this airbrush to settle. With my gun being the single action gun, and again, air still coming out with no color, because I'm not pulling the trigger, you can take this and kind of dry your cookie. I'm gonna do the same thing now. I'm gonna build onto the next layer. I'm happy with that color. I'm gonna show you this because I want you to see what it looks like before the glitter. And then we're gonna pray we can get it into place again. So when you lift this up, you don't want to drag it or wiggle it. You wanna lift it straight up. So then that way, if there's any excess liquid from the airbrush on your stencil, it's not dripping onto your cookie. So lifting it straight up. Here is the design. If I wanted to, um, some extra icing on here. If I wanted to like clean up the cookie or finish it off, cause it's just what I like to do, could go ahead and spray around the edges. I'm gonna try and get this line back up. Ooh, that actually worked pretty well. And I'm gonna show you how now I can make it with some glitter. So this you kind of have to move fast. So I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna add a quick layer. See how I accidentally sprayed too much there? You can kind of already see it pooling. I'm just going to spray my dust onto the cookie and lift straight up. Turning your airbrush on and just letting the air flow out of it Go around and anything that wasn't attached to the cookie, like the extra, will just blow right off. Again, I'm not pulling the trigger. So then you have some shimmer to it. Again, you can go through and lightly airbrush around your edges with the same color. And there you go. Moving right along in our airbrush tutorial, I am going to go ahead and show you how you can do a rainbow effect on cookies. So let's go ahead and, hmm, let's just see where this takes us. All right, so I still have some yellow in here. This is how much it goes, you guys. You're seeing like I have a minimal amount in here. So it's going to take you a while. So if you are not used to this, again, go back to our handy dandy paper towel. When you mix certain colors, you're going to get, as we know, the color wheel, what together makes what. It works the same on your airbrush machine. So when I'm gonna do um, something that is requested a lot when it comes to unicorn or tropical because of being summer is I'm going to make um, like the sunset-esque look. I call it that, it's not really sunset, I know that. But I'm going to use two colors and I'm going to achieve three. So I'm gonna begin by airbrushing my cookie with some yellow. Again, just light pulling of the trigger.
You can always go through with your ear and just dry it. Okay. Got a good color of yellow. So if I'm thinking of this in thirds, all right? So I'm gonna want, I'm gonna do yellow, orange, and pink. So I'm gonna take my yellow and do an overspray down here of it because I want my middle to be orange. Can you see that? I'm gonna clean out my gun and I'm going to put pink in here. I'll be right back. All right, coming back, I'm gonna spray my pink right there to make sure. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray the rest of the cookie pink and then the overlap of the yellow, which pink and yellow together is going to create orange. Do you see that coming through? If I wanted to add blue in the corner, blue and pink together make purple. So if I wanted to add some purple here, I could do that. If I wanted to hit this corner with the blue, you can make green. So you can get all of these variations with just a few colors. So we can try that out. I'm gonna add a little bit of blue. So this is blue, that's in my airbrush, you see it for spring. And I'm just ever so lightly pulling it back. Do you see that purple coming through now? So again, I only used three colors and we achieved this. Again, just a little bit of pressure I'm barely nudging this little boy back and it's coming out. So again, you can take your air and dry it. And then that way, if you were going to do, say, some of these over top and spray it with gold glitter, you can use a double airbrush effect. I feel like one of the most dreaded colors to airbrush with is dun 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 black here is the checkered flag stencil we're gonna attempt to spray and pray to the airbrush gods above that we don't get that color bleed underneath so a few things can cause color bleed again i am absolutely no expert on this this is just in my experience, oversaturating the cookie. When you're using dark colors, it's really easy to do that because we want that like deep, vibrant coloring. It's all about patience. Like I can't just be like, done. No, it's gonna be like a watery mess. Also, when you're using darker colors, if I'm doing like seven of these, I'm gonna want to clean the stencil. Again, it's gonna be dependent upon your airbrush machine and your comfortability level every two to three cookies because I do not want any when I'm picking it up and it's leaking underneath or bleeding onto it, anything to transfer onto my cookie. So I have black in here, just tested it out. We're gonna start slow and steady. So again, same side to side motion. And I'm gonna let a little bit of color out. I'm also holding the, airbrush machine directly over top. I'm not coming super close. I have a good distance between my cookie and my gun. 
Okay, and filling in the squares. And you can go back, make sure it's dry. You can give it a moment. Should dry relatively quickly because you're doing light, simple layers. I guess that's where we want to build. So now we're just gonna go, move my gun a little bit closer. And again, keep going to the next one. I'm going to keep doing this until I achieve the darkness that I'm looking for on the cookie. So if I want a really like muted black color and just slight variation, totally can do this. I'm going to hit some air on it. And I'm pulling the trigger. And I can now see the black developing. I have not changed the pressure. All of a sudden now I'm not like, okay, now I'm gonna pull heavier and I'm gonna pull heavier. I'm still doing very light. Additions. Another. Get in there, get in there. Sometimes I feel like with airbrush, it's less is more. It's like makeup when you get to that and you're like, should I go in for another round? I'm gonna go in for another round, we're gonna see. I'm just using this last round to kind of feel, fill in any of the little dead space. So I might move the gun a tad bit closer. There's any other little ones left? I always feel like the corners are where I have it. Maybe right there. Okay. The moment of truth. We're gonna lift straight up. Yes! Ha! Oh my gosh, you guys, you don't know how nervous I was. <laughs> Black always makes me nervous. So we have these nice little crisp. There is a slight Oops, let's get this an overspray right here. I would be personally putting something on top of this. If this bugs you, you can take a paper towel, the corner, like a wet one, if you can control that. If not, you can take a Q-tip, a little damp Q-tip and clean up your edges. Little tip for you on that. At the end of every airbrush experience, you want to make sure to clean out your machine. Again, using the hot water technique. I also like to, once I rinse it through with some good hot water, it's coming out normal. I like to put a little bit of Everclear or alcohol, whatever is sold in your area, into the machine and just let it sit there for a moment or so and then spray it through. I like to let it sit because anything that's a buildup in here, it will help flush it through, um, sometimes which water cannot do. When using shimmer or sheens or anything like that in the gun, sometimes it can get clogged into here. And if you were using your like metallic golds through your machines, those are a lot harder because the nozzles and the guns aren't always built for that type of texture. I love like my first few with the metallic when I mix the metallic um, like dust in here with some Everclear, but then the machine starts to get clogged and that's when I use the Everclear mainly to flush it through. If you have a clog, you can put your finger over here. Let me turn this down because that's black in here. Put a finger, you can hear it. Listen to the difference. Okay, 
So I'm clogging this and I'm gonna pull back slightly and it's going to bubble in the chamber. Listen. Not sure if you can hear that, but there's some bubbles up in the color chamber. And it helps push the clog backwards. So then that way it can come out as a nice little spray. So again, just do this, pull it back. And there you go. But again, make sure every time that you clean your machine out so it is ready for your next use. You did it. You finished the airbrush tutorial. I hope that wasn't as bad as you thought. Fingers crossed. Go ahead and comment below a tip or trick that you learned during this video and something that you can really bring to your airbrushing game. Anytime you try one of our tips, tricks, designs, tag us over on Instagram. We love to see what you guys create. Speaking of Instagram, if you have not already, all details will be listed in the description box. Go ahead and give us a follow over on Instagram. If you like episodes like this, we try and share as much free content as we can. If you want to dive even deeper into the cookie chat, you can also find our link to our Patreon. Over on Patreon, our wonderful cookie chatters, or our basic bakers like we like to call them, also enjoy discounts on our merch, as well as exclusive Patreon content, maybe a little airbrush tutorial that is only launched to them. We love our Patreons and appreciate all of our new ones this month. You guys are the real bosses, the basic bakers. You keep us going. So shout out to all of you guys. Thank you so much for following along. And until next time, I'm Chelsea with Rolling in the Dough AZ. We'll see you later.